All right, the first thing we want to do is identify all the forces that are acting on this 25 kilogram box as it's pulled across the floor. Now they've already said there's a rope that pulls on the box with a force of 75 newtons. So we know that force. Acting on the box as usual is our force of gravity, which will be straight down. And it does say that there's some friction. Now friction always opposes motion. Now we know the box is being dragged along the floor, so we know the motion is gonna be horizontal. So friction has to oppose that motion. So friction will act to the left. So for this box, I'm gonna label this force right here, force of friction. Now, while I'm at it, the original force, I always have to break it down into its components. There's going to be an X component that's responsible for moving that box to the right. I'm just gonna label that FX. But there's also an additional Y component, which I'll put in a different color, pulling the box up. And I'll label that FY. Now to be consistent, I'm going to make this force, my force of gravity, red or pink as well. Now anytime I'm on a surface, there has to be a normal force that's up. And I'll label that accordingly. Now we've got our diagram. We've identified all the forces that are present. Now we can switch to our Newton's second law equation, which simply says that my net force is the sum of all the forces acting on the object. Now we have to treat these as vectors. So one method we could use is to take all our vectors, add them up tip to tail, and figure out what's left over. That would be my net force. But I can see from the picture I've got four vectors there, and that's not going to make a triangle, so it's going to be a little bit more challenging to actually solve it. That's called the trig method when we do that. And if we have a trig method, Generally, we want to get a triangle out of it so we can use, you know, sine law and cosine law to actually finish it. So in this question, I'm going to use the component method. And with the component method, I know my basic equation, F net is the sum of forces. So I just want to break that equation down into both the X and in the Y direction. So horizontally, I've got F net in the X will be the sum of the forces in the X. And then vertically, I also have the same equation, F net in the Y will be the sum of the forces acting in the Y direction. Let's start with our X. Now before we go anywhere, we've got to figure out what these components are. They tell you the angle, it's 30 degrees with the floor. So I know this angle right here is 30 degrees. So I can leave it to you guys to actually get those values. But if I go 75 sine 30, because my y component is opposite to the angle, I will get a y component of 37.5 newtons. Just remember that it's directed upwards. Similarly, if I go 75 cos 30, because the fx is on the adjacent side, I will get my x component. And it turns out that it will be 64.95. I'm going to leave a few decimals there. So I've got all my forces broken down into components that are both parallel and perpendicular to the motion. That's important because when we do that, it'll make our solution as simple as possible. So we're doing the x direction. My net force in the x will be fx, which is going with the motion, so that's positive minus force of friction, and it's subtracted because it's going against the motion. In other words, my overall force in the X, when I cancel those two off, will be to the right. Fx minus F friction. Now, we have four minutes for this. My net force in the X will be Ma. Fx is 64.95. And we know the formula for force of friction is the coefficient of friction times the normal. We need to figure out what this normal force is. So we're going to switch to the y direction. Now remember, we can do this logically. We'll do it two ways. The normal force is the squeeze between the box and the surface. Now without the 75 Newton force, 
fn will be exactly equal to fg. It'll be the same value. But you can see here that we're pulling up slightly. We're pulling up with a force of 37.5 newtons. So it'll be squeezing the surface a little bit less. In fact, it'll be squeezing the surface less 37.5 newtons. So if we know Fg, which is just mass times gravity, and we know the mass is 25 kilograms. So when I go 25 times 9.8, I get 245 newtons. If I have 245 newtons and I subtract 37.5, a little less of a squeeze, I'll get my normal force. So we can do it intuitively. The other way to do it is with our equation. We know that our net force in the Y is the sum of all the forces in the Y. But it's not moving in the Y. It's only moving horizontally. It's not moving vertically at all. So my net force in the Y is going to be zero. So let's look at all our forces acting in the Y. Let's say up is positive. So I've got Fn that's positive, plus, see how this one's also up, 37.5, plus 37.5 newtons. And then Fg is down, so minus 245 newtons. And when I do the math on this and get Fn by itself, I get a normal force that's 207.5 newtons. So that'll allow me to finish my equation above. Now that I know my normal force, I can put it in up here and finish the equation and solve for A. So let's do that. So we've got 64.95 minus my coefficient of friction, which is given as 0 0.21, times my normal force, which we've established to be 207.5 newtons. And when I do that, I end up getting a net force in the X equivalent to 21.38 newtons. But don't forget my net force in the X is always equal to MA. Let's get rid of some of the clutter. So I get MAX is 21.38. My mass is 25 kilograms. So when I divide both sides by 25, I get an acceleration in the X to be 0 0.86 meters per second squared. And obviously it'll be to the right. 